right, so I'm doing another top ten list, but this one's going to be a little different. This one's going to be the t my top ten favorite relationships in comics. Uh, relationships between, uh, you know, the boyfriend-girlfriend stuff, or there's actually one in here that is a girlfriend-girlfriend store at one. Uh, and remember, guys, this is my list, so I get to call the shots. There are a bunch of others, and this was actually really hard to pick because I, there are a lot of relationships in comics that I like, and I'm like, oh, I can relate to that, and I can relate to that pairing, and I can understand wh where these, why these two are together and all that. So, yeah, and I don't... The real, other reason why is, I, I, is because I don't think anyone else, uh, anyone else has uh, thought of this, uh, of this top ten list, so... Um, yeah. And once again, this is my list, my top ten, there are others, and this was a hard one, so I had to pick and choose. So we're going to go off into number ten. Now, number ten is an independent uh, relationship between, in the Top Cow universe. This is between their two, flat, uh, Top Cow's two main characters they put together, and they even had a daughter together. And I'm talking about uh, Jackie Estacado, the Darkness, and Sarah Prezzini, the, the Witchblade. Yep. These two... Actually, I don't know how they ended up together, but I look back and, you know, they actually, they started out as bitter enemies. They started out as they wanted to kill each other. But then, you know, Jackie, you know, Jackie and Sarah started to begin to have feelings for one another. And they actually had a daughter together, Hope. Uh, it was, I think, yeah, I remember, if I remember right, the daughter's name was Hope. So, uh, if I remember right. But, yeah, these two do care about each other, and, um... It was actually one of those, I hate you, you hate me, but then Jackie started to have feelings for Sarah. Um, he hid it behind saying he just wanted to have sex with her, but then he he really came out and said that I really do, he really did love Sarah. So, I really enjoyed that. Like, Jackie was always this millionaire, was always this thug playboy who just wanted to have sex with women for the sake of sex. And then Sarah comes along and totally throws off his world, and now he's like... Uh, He's now a total family man as well as a gangster. It's also very funny because she's still a cop and he's still a he's still a, a, a leader. He's still a drug. I wouldn't say drug lord. Mafia don. He's if I remember right because I haven't been keeping up with the Witchblade and Darkness comics. But the last time I read Witchblade and Darkness comics, they were still uh, part of the mafia and he and she Jackie was still part of the mafia and uh, Sarah was part was still a cop. But that could have changed. I've, it's been a while since I've read the comics, but. Yeah, these two are complete opposites, and they still remain together. They're not married. I don't think they're married. Also, I don't. I can't remember if they're married or not. I'm real. I'm really sorry, but I always dug their uh, relationship because it just started out as just they hated each other, and now they uh, really do you know love each other very much. But Jackie's still the same playboy he is, and Sarah still Sarah can still be the uh, overbearing woman that she is. But they still care about one another, and I like that. All right, so number nine. Now, number nine is the only is the uh, is between two women. Now, this comes from uh, DC Comics, and the reason. Now, I don't want to be people jumping down my throat about it, but because the reason why these two are on the list is not because ooh, it's two girls. No, nah, these two get points because they actually do have a lot of love for one another, and that's Scandal and Knockout from Secret Six. Yeah, Scandal and Knockout. Uh, Okay, the reason why they get... First off, the reason why they get points is because when you go to hell to find the woman you love or the person you love, you get major props, all right? And Scandal does the, just that. She takes the entire Secret Six team to go look for Knockout in in hell. So, yeah. I mean, you, when you tr take on... She pulls a Dante's Inferno, basically. And, you know, she really does care about Knockout a lot. Uh, she does love Knockout uh, quite a lot, and um, she was actually incredible. Actually, before they got an ongoing, they had a mini series where Knockout was supposedly killed, and Scandal found the guy who, the girl who killed her, and tortured her de to death. So Scandal's more than willing to take you out for the and no Knockout as well. She ca Knockout cares a lot about Scandal, even though she like towers over her. Um, but they really do care about one another. It's kind of like uh, Knockouts kind of has a as a childlike mentality with Scandal, and a lot of people do like their relationship. Not because just because oh they're two they're two hot chicks. No, it's the, the loyalty they have with one another. Uh, they have a lot of loyalty to one another. Even though Scandal dated a uh, stripper for a short time, 
uh, while Knockout was in hell, but that's understandable. Your girlfriend was your the person you love was dead, so she thought it would move on, it would be okay to move on. But again, this par- this relationship gets major props because she went right to hell to find uh, to find someone uh, she cares about. So more or less, that's you know that's justifiable, and uh, you know Scandal and Knockout are willing to do anything for one another. Um, so there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of loyalty between the two, and, uh, just all around, uh, you know, all around a fun relationship, because it's always fun to see Scandal, she's mostly serious, and Knockout has, like I said, a childlike mentality, so it's cool to see them play off one another, uh, especially when they get into a lot of trouble together. So, um, yeah, that's why I like them. Uh, now, number eight's another DC pairing, and this one, uh, it recently ended in the Cry for Justice comics, uh, as I recall. And, you know, it was kind of sad to see it go because it was a long-running relationship, um, and I thought they re- uh, um, DC should have shouldn't have ended it. But still, it happened, so what are you going to do? Uh, but yeah, this is the relationship between Green... Uh, my number eight pick is Green Arrow and Black Canary. Now... Um, Green Arrow and, you know, Ollie and Dana, uh, were, you know, lovers for the longest time, and it was always fun because they really did play off, Dana and Ollie did play off each other just so well, I mean, they played off each other like, uh, more uh, as, not only as lovers, but like two good friends, you know, um, and Dana forgave him for all the, Ollie's other, you know, relationship with other women, and, uh, it crushed me when I was reading that Blackest Night time with Green Arrow. It just crushed me when, you know, that Black Lantern and Green Arrow uh, told him about, uh, told Dana about Shadow and uh, her, his relationship with her, and ah, it crushes you when you learn about that, all that. Um, but yeah, I hated to see this marriage go, because he wanted to stay really loyal to uh, Dana for the most part. And I always dug their relationship, even in the Justice League animated universe. Um, they kept uh, very true to their characters there. So, uh, there's that. Also, like I said, they they came off a lot like, you know, not only just lovers, they came off a lot like, uh, you know, uh, best friends. So, it was always fun to see the, uh, the cat and mouse relationship. During their early days of, of their relationship, it was always fun to see their uh, cat and mouse relationship. Uh, early relationship go back and forth because uh, Ollie really wanted her at the beginning Ollie, Ollie really wanted Canary at the beginning and you know Canary just played with him uh, so that was always fun to see but again once again I hated to see their marriage end uh, I really didn't really want that to happen because Ollie was going to remain very true to her so and I just hated how that happened at the end I was just so pissed off in fact, I might go pick up the Green Arrow Black Canary trades eventually. Um, I'm told they're pretty good. But all in all, yeah, this is my number eight pick. Really loved it. Really wish they DC decided to hang on to it, but, you know, not every relationship lasts in comics. So, uh, yeah. But uh, we're going to move on now to the number seven pick. Now, my number seven pick uh, basically... Is a, was actually started out as a cartoon, uh, two cartoon characters that transitioned into IDW. Yeah, this is the second independent comic book company. And actually, I, I put them in here, even though they're car- they were originally cartoon characters, but now they transitioned into comics. Um, I thought it'd be okay because that's where their relationship uh, sprang out. So I guess that gave me that more or less gave me a pass to do this as a comic book uh, couple. So yeah, and here they are. Uh, Snake Eyes and Scarlet from G.I. Joe comics. Yeah. Now, uh, Snake Eyes and Scarlet are currently married in the G.I. Joe comics, and, you know, the one thing that uh, that always gets me is that, how the hell do you keep this relationship going when si- Snake Eyes doesn't even say a word? Yeah, that's right, people. He still do- Snake Eyes still doesn't talk, even to his new wife. So, uh, I think that's funny, but they really do uh, follow each other, and I'm told, because I haven't been keeping up with the G.I. Joe comics a lot, all I know is that they're married now, uh, they have actually a tel- Snake Eyes and Scarlet actually now share a telepathic link. Also, uh, Snake Eyes gives her body, um, uh, S- Scarlet's able to read Snake Eyes, uh, uh, body language and hand signals, so that's how he, he, I guess how he communicates with her. 
but Snake Eyes is incredibly loyal to Scarlet, and likewise, likewise um, there's actually one point where uh, Scarlet got kidnapped by Cobra, and Snake Eyes tore through the entire base looking for her. Um, uh, and that's when he actually... I think that was the comic where he proposed to her, so... Um, yeah, I think that's... I think, actually, this cat, this picture right here is also part of that, where he found her. Um, but yeah, Snake Eyes, uh, even though he doesn't say a word to her... I think, actually, Scarlet said something to Snake Eyes, like, you really don't have to say a word just to, te uh, just to say you love me. And I was like, aw. And I'm like... That, that was very cute in my opinion. I thought that was very not, that was very sweet for her to say that to him, and um, you know it's a very emotional. They have actually very you know they still work together. They're still working as partners, and they still and they uh, still fight on the front lines against Cobra. And they are they do have each other's back as now not only just partners but now husband and wife. And uh, you know I really hope they stay. Um, IDW decides to keep. Uh, Snake Eyes and Scarlet together, because it is a really good pairing. But, uh... <clears throat> gonna move on now to number six. Now, number six is an X-Men pairing. Yeah, it's the first Marvel on the list, but uh, the reason why... I could have gone with a bunch of other Marvel relationships. Um, there are a bunch I could have gone with, and there's a lot I like, like uh, Gambit and Rogue, Warren and Psylocke, uh, Forge and Storm, but this one, out of all of them, I like the most, and, you know, it's no long, they're no longer together because one of them died, and it was just, re that, it really tugged at your heartstrings at, with this one, and that's Wolverine and Mariko. Yep. <clears throat> Logan and, and Mariko was, uh, that one, it was sad to see their relationship end because, uh, Logan really did love, uh, Mariko out of all the women he's been with out of, even, he even started a relationship with Domino, but he still keeps, he's always been, you know, he's always been in love with Mariko since the day he met her, and he, it broke him, like, you felt that break, him break when he had to kill Mariko to, to uh, you know, end her suffering, uh, due to that poison, he couldn't find, there was no antidote, so he, he had to kill her, you know, she begged him to kill her, and he did it, and... <clears throat> It's a very touching scene, and I real and uh, you know this is like I said, Wolverine has had his uh, has uh, his his eyes on different women, but uh, he he's always told he's always said that you know Mariko was the one for one woman for him out of all of them, like that was the one that understood him the most out of all of them. So, uh, and I always loved their <laughs> relationship because they were like it was like a Romeo and Juliet story because he was out, the outsider and he was at war with her father. And uh, she was not allowed to see him because he was a gaijin. So it was a very like it was a gritty, bloody, very bloody Romeo and Juliet story. So uh, only a few, yeah, feudal Romeo and Juliet story. Well, feudal when I mean Japanese, you know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, um, again, this uh, falls under to, and I don't think Wolverine never really had the closure of Mariko's death, even when he, you know, even when him and Nightcrawler were talking about it. Uh, he never had that. He still he's he still has doesn't have that closure. Even in the recent Wolverine on uh, ongoing books, uh, he saw Mariko in in hell. Uh, be and he had he was actually tortured by he the devil forced her to torture Wolverine, and that was just painful to watch. Like, oh no, that you really and you felt really Wolverine's spirit just break right there. Um, so yeah. It was tortured. It was never. It, it was sadly never meant to be. I wish, my, but then again, you know, Wolverine's life is just filled. With, out of all Marvel characters, Wolverine's life is probably filled with the most misery and woe. Out of everyone, out of Hulk and Spider-Man, it's Logan who gets the the real shit end of the stick. So yeah, um, this is just part one of the relation of my top uh, ten relation uh, comic book relationships. Uh, Coming back for part two, and like I said, this is my list, and, you know, hope you guys have been enjoying it so far, and uh, see you for the top five.